Welcome back to this special two-hour bumper edition of The Briefing. Well, there's more bad news for Russia on the international stage as they face even more isolation from international diplomacy. Reports are circulating that Russia could be set to be kicked out of the Council of Europe. Well, what does that mean? Joining me now is Conservative MP Richard Holden. He's in Strasbourg, where the Council of Europe is based. Welcome to the programme, Richard. Um, first of all, for those of us, um, and I'm sure that includes most of the political and journalistic class in this country, uh, what's the difference between the Council of Europe, the European Council, the European Commission? The, the Council of Europe isn't an EU body, is it? No, so all of the other bodies you mentioned are all European Union bodies. The Council of Europe represents all countries in Europe, including places like Switzerland, Iceland, um, uh, uh, Liechtenstein, all the small countries as well. So everybody's a member here. And it, it, it was set up after the Second World War, basically in order to st uh, promote uh, human rights and the rule of law across Europe after, what, after the horrors of what we'd seen. And today um, we're debating here in an extraordinary session and basically it's got representatives from all the parliaments of all the countries in the uh, in Europe here and we're debating whether or not we should basically uh, kick Russia out of this organization another of those organizations which gives it a veneer of international respectability for what it's happening uh, it, and what it's doing in Ukraine at the moment and I've been meeting with uh, MPs from across uh, Europe uh, in the last uh, couple of days uh, and in including from Ukraine some of whom cannot go back to their own parliamentary constituencies because they are uh, uh, currently under Russian attack. Mm. Well, Richard, you've been in these meetings today. You've been in Strasbourg uh, talking to other members of legislatures across Europe. How's the mood there? Is it fairly unanimous? Do you think that Russia will be expelled? Uh, I think Russia will be suspended. I think that's what's going to happen. The recommendation from uh, the group, from all the MPs across Europe will go to essentially the ministers of all the governments from the countries uh, in Europe tomorrow. I really hope so. I really hope that's what's going to happen. There's been really strong condemnation. And there is real fear here, speaking to some of the other countries, places like Moldova, uh, Lithuania, Latvia, they are really concerned that what's happening currently uh, into Ukraine could happen to their countries as well. And that's what they're really fearful of. And they really think that we need to send a proper, strong message from across Europe that this is just not acceptable. And the way that Russia is behaving is just beyond the pale. And there have been some uh, countries which are a bit more uh, on the edge on this. Remember, lots of countries in Europe, Ireland, Switzerland, uh, Austria, uh, they've traditionally been non-aligned and neutral. They're not members of NATO, for example. Um, but even they are coming on side now. And I think that global condemnation even from those countries who are traditionally neutral or non-aligned, is incredibly important. It was extraordinary to see even Switzerland follow much of Europe with sanctions against Russia uh, in recent weeks. That was very extraordinary, given Switzerland wasn't even a member of the UN until the turn of the millennium. Um, but, but Richard Holden, what does it actually mean if Russia is kicked out of the council? Is it anything more than a gesture? Or does a gesture like this actually matter to Mr. Putin, who's already cast himself as an international pariah? Well, I think, Tom, what we've seen in the last few weeks is changes like even like on UEFA, banning them from take Russia from taking part. Some of those cultural sanctions that we've been taking across Europe as well have actually really started to get through to the Russian people because they start to see just how much of an international pariah that their government is becoming. And it's some of those things going to really help some of those brave journalists we've seen in the last few days reporting in Russia, um, just trying to show how much of a pariah their country is not to believe all of the uh, propaganda being put out by Putin's Pravda machines uh, and to start to see that the international community d does not view what they're doing. There is, there is something beyond what they're being told. And I think anything that we can do uh, to strengthen their hand within Russia, uh, it's got to be helpful. So that's what, that's what we're hoping to do here in the Council of Europe today. I've got to ask you, Richard, the British delegation, yourself uh, included, uh, are we having as loud a voice in the Council of Europe as we have done in years past? Of course, many people may be concerned that with Britain leaving uh, the European Union, uh, that that might influence our uh, influence in bodies like the Council of Europe, distinct bodies, but one that are associated. Uh, is Britain still speaking with a loud voice? 
I think Britain is one of the founder members of the Council of Europe, and we have an incredibly good presence here. Um, I've just been chatting to the, a lot of the other delegations want to speak to our delegation here on the ground because they know how influential Britain has been and actually ahead of the curve the UK has been in some of the sanctions and also support for Ukraine over the last uh, several years, actually, since the invasion of Crimea. So I think, yes, we are still definitely batting well here. Um, I don't think those other, um, uh, those other things have had so much of an impact uh, as people might like to spin. Uh, I think what we are doing, though, is we're really showing that, you know, by our diplomacy, Britain is leading the way here. Um, I think the Prime Minister has shown that, you know, we had the President of uh, Ukraine in the House of Commons on a live stream not that long ago, and you've, you've seen the former President speaking up about the way that Britain has been there, right at the heart of trying to deliver a um, real change for the people of Ukraine. And it's actually our weight here, which is also helping countries like Ukraine. I've just met the head of the Ukrainian delegation, uh, Lisa Yanko. Uh, she's only 31 years old, uh, from Kiev. Um, her father's still there, looking after her grand a 96-year-old grandmother. You know, she can't go back. And you know, hearing voices like that, they want to speak to the Brit and know that we're behind them all the way, and that we're also going to keep pressuring to provide that uh, humanitarian aid, but also, crucially, the thing which Britain's been leading on, uh, that defensive military capability uh, to help the Ukrainian people. Well, Richard Holden, we really appreciate you sparing some minutes for us here this afternoon on GB News. We'll let you get back to your meetings there uh, in the Council of Europe, but thank you for sparing the time here today to brief us Thanks, on Tom. that important issue.